Welcome to ReChurch. I'm Marshall Fant, the Director of Church Consulting and Strategic Planning for Gospel Fellowship Association Missions. My purpose is to encourage pastors and church leaders as you refocus, renew, and revitalize your churches. We've established this podcast to offer practical tips and suggestions as you equip disciples to make disciples. This is Marshall Fant with GFA Missions. Welcome back to our podcast, Research. So glad to have you with us. Uh, today, we have someone that's a dear, dear friend of mine and no stranger to our, 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 our Research podcast, Rand Hummel. Welcome. Good to be with you once again. So many of you know, Rand is a great uh, friend of teens. He's a personal friend of mine. He's known all around the world for, for his ministry with teens. And he has a ministry resource that I knew about sometime in the past, but Rand brought it to my, uh, to my memory again, and it's called Daily Meditations with Rand Hummel. So, Rand, what we want to talk about is really what is it, um, how did it come to be, uh, what is your burden, and how did uh, the format and the way you're presenting this, how did it originate? So, oh, please fill us in on that, Janae. Well, actually, I was preparing these just to keep a kind of connection with the campers that come every summer. Yeah. You know, we all know that if we get in the Word of God and stay in the Word of God, just consistently be in God's Word, it'll change our lives. Mm. And um, uh, it's kind of an appetizer. The daily meditations are not long, they're only five or six minutes. Uh, they're recorded to where you can listen to it or you can read it or you can do both. Mm. But I just had a burden to be in, connect, uh, be in connection with the kids. So I started writing them, uh, I think it was 2019. Right. And then all of a sudden the world kind of changed to the beginning of 2020. Yeah. And yeah. when I heard that we couldn't have camp, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I grieved. It yeah. just yeah. killed me that we couldn't be with our campers. And so I kind of hurried the whole process up and we started uh, in June, I think it was, of uh, right in the middle of COVID during 2020. Uh, just They're just daily meditations on the Word of God. We take a book of the Bible and we crawl through it in about 30 days or Monday to Friday. And uh, just about, like I said, five or six minutes in length. Uh, kind of focused at teens, but I have heard that we have as many senior saints, which as we all know are nothing more than teenagers with wrinkles, and as many of them listen, I think, as the teens listen. And so I just had the burden to take the Word of God, especially some of the tougher uh, passages that are kind of hard to understand, right. and just break it down to, to help the kids and help the teens understand it. So let's just paint the scenario. Um a teen, a, a kid comes to the wilds of North Carolina or comes to the wilds of New England. Uh, during that week, they're saturated with the Word of God through preaching and daily devotions. They're, again, preached all, all week, uh, people loving on them all week. And so, uh, Rand, how does it go? The love of God with the Word of God. How does, mm -hmm. how, what's, what's your mission? Giving, giving the truth of God with the love of God so lives can be changed for the glory of God. Amen. So this is what normally happens. The children, the kids, the teens, they go home. They may or may not be in a good local church. Um, I know, Rand, your goal and the Wiles' goal is to send them home with some materials, uh, some resources so they can uh, continue to grow in Christ. Uh, so, Rand, I think uh, this daily meditations uh, that you're producing is an electronic format that they can subscribe to. So let's start with this. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at ranhumble.com. All right. So as you look at that, um, we subscribe to daily meditations and on that, um, you know, does it come each day and can you subscribe to it? That's right. It will yeah. come every day again, Monday to Friday it can come on your phone, right. can come on your iPad or computer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and by the way, one of the reasons, as much as this can be a blessing, but also not be a blessing, is as I travel, I'm amazed at the airports and in the plane. Everybody has mask on, hat on, yep. and their phone's right in front of them like this. And this is where so many of today's world live. So I thought, well, if that's where they're going to be, I'm going to go to where they are Amen. and be able to get it so they have. In fact, there's some kids who have told me, they use these meditations as their alarm. It comes on in the morning and they all start out the exact same. I, I don't have a pre-recorded beginning, but Hey guys, you having a good day? I hope you are. What's a good day. A good day is when it starts and then spending time with our wonderful Lord. Amen. And then we jump right into the passage, uh, the scripture that we're meditating on for that day. 
Sure. So, Rain, let's talk about the format. Um, I think you said it's audio and written or both. And now as we're speaking to parents, as, the, or as we are talking to parents about this resource, uh, I love the story you showed, you gave me and told me about the missionary family who contacted you about their daughter who was uh, listening to daily meditation. So why don't you take it and explain to us the story and how parents can use this? Yeah, the daily meditation. Well, I just got that email this morning. I've had a couple others from other missionary friends and obviously even many parents. A lot of parents in the morning, they use this for their family devotions while they're around the table. Okay. And they listen to the five minutes or so and then talk about what I shared during that time. Uh, this particular one, they're in Taiwan. And uh, that's Brian and Aaron Bolin. And uh, I was able to join them for a prayer meeting last night, a Zoom prayer meeting. And uh, anyway, I get an email and she just thanked me. She said, and by the way, thanks so much. My oldest daughter uh, listens to your to your daily meditations every morning. And for us, it's just so good for number one, someone to speak in English to her. But number two, just somebody else that loves the Lord not just her mom and dad. And so, you know, a lot of our missionary kids, they're, they're servants, they're giving, they're sacrificing themselves in a way, but sometimes they can be a little bit lonely. And just having that connection uh, with, maybe if they got to go to camp one of the years when they're back on furlough, but just that connection with them and somebody cares. And, and it's one of those things that it's always an encouraging thing. Sometimes it's convicting. And remember, the uh, shepherd, even when he teaches and preaches, he has one voice to draw the sheep to him and another one to scare the the vultures and the wolves away. And so there is both the exhortation, obviously, and then some of it's just very, very convicting. But again, it's just something they can listen to that, again, I hope they would want to go back and dig into that passage a little bit more later that day. So without them being in in the word, they're not going to grow and change. So we know from the scriptures, you know, how shall a young man cleanse his way? How? Psalm 119.9 tells us that uh, by, by being in the word. So, Rand, is it fair to say that your goal is to put the teens in the word, to put the families in the word so they can have a passage to discuss? Is that a fair way to describe what you're trying to accomplish here? Right, exactly. All right. So, Rand, let's just back up for a minute. So, um, we need they need to understand where they can find this. In fact, uh, uh, those listening in our show notes, we will put a sample and a link to where you can find this so you can go back. So, um, so Rand, daily meditations, you have been doing this for a while. So if the parents say, I want to go back and listen, um, you have quite a few stored up, right? Yeah, I think I've already recorded. I added up this morning. I think it's I think I've got over 350 wow. uh, already pre-recorded, and yeah. uh, I actually have the list here in front of me. Um, and and each book has its own thought or own theme, as we all know. So, contagious faith, hope, and love—that's First Thessalonians. Okay, uh, that's what we're finishing up right now. Uh, Jonah's magnificent God, the Book of Jonah. First John is entitled More. Uh, First Peter, facing ridicule. Right. Second Peter. Uh, the theme there is exposing counterfeit Christianity. Uh, Second Timothy, uh, there's 38 of those meditations, character in crisis. Colossians, the visible icon of our invisible God. Mm. Uh, Ephesians, I couldn't do Ephesians in just 30 days. I had no, to break I'm that sure. into two. <laughs> Ephesians 1 through 3, in yeah. Christ. And then Ephesians 4 through 6, like Christ. Right. And then Romans, uh, it's just called therefore, because as you know, the book of Romans, chapter 1, 2, and 3, Man ruined his life in sin. Chapters 4 through 11, God's remedy is Jesus. Chapter 12 through 16, what can I do now, the rest of my life, to say thank you, Lord, for what you have done for me? So those are done. And right now I've already written James and uh, Philippians, and I'm in the midst of recording them now. Uh, It does take some time, and not just time, but it takes me to get my mind really Uh in gear to sit down and be able to get these recorded without stopping a thousand times. It does. It takes spiritual energy, right, Rand? It's it's concentration. It's like preaching a message, right? And so uh, so let's go to RandHummel.com. Rand, is there a charge for this podcast? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No, it's free. So they just subscribe. You can probably – you can probably subscribe from the wilds, uh, websites, the wilds of new England or the wilds also, but the easiest thing is just go to randhumble.com right. and the first thing you see is subscribe. But then it also on that website, it does list uh, a lot of the books and Bible helps for teens and adults sure. that I've written. 
It doesn't mean you can purchase them from that site, but if you click on them, it'll take you to the Wilds online store, right. and then you can go through there or go to Amazon.com. Most of them are carried there also. Yeah. So, Rand, you've been writing these devotional for campers uh, for years, right? I didn't start that until, I don't know, I was over 40, I think. Yep. So, what is that? And now you're 110, 90, right? So 25 yeah. years. That's yeah. kind of hard to believe, but yeah. <laughs> okay. And honestly, they... I am not super academic. I, I love to study, but they take me a year. Mm. I usually meditate on one book of the Bible from January until September. And uh, then I start collating. I keep notes and do word studies and every word and all that. And then once September comes, I start writing them, <clears throat> getting them prepared. And then after that is done and the editors uh, take care of all their changes, yeah. then I'll take it and put it into, into our daily meditations. Yeah. Uh, Rand, this is a fantastic resource. Thank you for that. In fact, um, I know you're writing the God Not Times things all the time. In fact, I remember one Sunday night, we we're both traveling back to Greenville late one Sunday night. We, I ran across you in the Detroit airport and I uh, simply said, Hey, Rand, what you doing? And you said, well, I'm just sitting here working on the God nighttime. So, you know, thank you so much for that ministry. And I know you work on this continually and I know all right. So on these podcasts, I think, uh, like each podcast is like five to seven minutes. So really a family on the way to school, on the way home from school, or just going for a short errand could listen to this. And, and because the podcast is both in written form and audio form. Uh, so as they're traveling, they can listen to it and, and they even can forward this to the youth pastor to check out. And, and I think another great way that a family can just sit down and, and, and listen to it and then, uh, talk through it each day. Sure. It's also it the top. And at actually youth groups, a lot of youth pastors have done that, tries to get all of his kids. And then when they get together for Sunday school, they talk a little bit about it too. Yep. All right. So and I know part of the reason I know this, by the way, is during camp in the summer, uh, kids that I don't know will come running up to me and said, Hey, Rand, you having a good day? What's a good day? <laughs> if they started. It's kind of fun. It's great, right? I mean, these connect and the teens understand it. And as they're going through this, um, Rand, they understand your contagious love for Christ and your contagious love for them. And all that know you know that you, you love the Lord, you love your family, and you love teens. So as we think through this, let me ask you a question. So what are some challenges that you see that teens are facing uh, today and, and how, how is this directly affect them? And for someone that's never heard you preach, never read any material, any of your books or listen to your podcast. So tell us practically how this will help teens through these issues. Well, you know, you mentioned uh, when you truly love somebody, and this is the greatest commandment of all, to love our Lord. And then when you really love the Lord, you'll be so overwhelmed with his love for you that you'll want to reciprocate to everyone you can and love them too. When kids know that they're loved, it's huge. Kids are lonely today, very lonely, and they fear adulthood. They don't want to grow up. And, and come on, why yeah. would they? With COVID and just everything that's going on in our crazy world and the economy and just so many things, a lot of teens are scared. They really are. And part of it is, uh, I ask kids all the time, I have a privilege to preach in a lot of Christian schools. I'm going to one tomorrow. And I normally, when we're just hanging out, I'll get a bunch of them or I'll keep all the juniors and seniors say, okay, guys, I want you to tell me, what do you want to do when you're really, really old, like 32 years of age, okay? <laughs> and they look at me and they go, I don't know. Uh, and most of them say, I don't know. So I have a real burden to find out what they love to do, because I believe that God puts that desire in their heart. And then what did God gift them to do and help them have a goal? Because if they have a goal, then they have something to shoot for. Yeah. And then if they have the goal, when say they are 30 years of age, then what we can do is, okay, how can you make right decisions now to be able to reach that goal 15, 16 years from now? Because what they're loving now, what is your quote yeah. on that? You can tell yeah. them, go ahead and finish that. You know yeah. about. Well, I, I used to say, I know what you're going to do two years from now, five years from now. You're going to do what you love. Mm. And if you really, really love God and love others, you're going to please them and your folks and make wise decisions. But if you just love you, you're headed for trouble and a pretty, pretty sad life. Yeah, so true. So true. So, Rand, this podcast is a way 
that the teens can really learn to love God or continue to love God, love their parents, um, love their church, fall in love with with their Savior. And so as you've done all this, what are some of the unexpected blessings, something that you never even could have dreamed that would happen through this format, like, you know, going out, this is going out to thousands of teens. So what, what would be one or some of those unexpected blessings you've seen from this? Well, I think it's twofold. Number one, I love to study. I really do. Uh, the worst thing of my day is when I have to close my Bible, shut my computer and go to work. <laughs> not that I hate my work. Don't I, know, I, yeah. I just, yeah. I love, I get up very early in the morning and usually get two hours with the Lord in the morning. And I just love that time. Mm-hmm. So I love that part of it. But then in the summer when the kids come in up and then when I visit church, especially up here in new England, I was at one church uh, in, in New Hampshire and one of the, the pianist came to me and her brother. Now they're both in their mid to late seventies. Uh, and they walked up to me and said, Hey, thank you so much because your daily meditations, it's like getting a spiritual hug every morning. Wow. Well, I didn't even think that <laughs> that age group would be interested, but just making it clear and plain and, and practical. Um, and I don't know at all. And some of the pastors say, Hey, this is a tough one and go ask your pastor, mom or dad, maybe they can help you out with this one. But just hearing that. And then obviously from a lot of the kids and, and former staff that now are married and have their kids and they're getting them to listen to it. It's just, it's, just, it's a blessing to stay in contact with so many. It is. So Rand, what would be some ways that that we can pray for you, those that love you. I mean, you already have a very busy schedule. We all know that you're preaching, you're, you're writing and, and, and those that love you. And, and, and as you produce these, this new daily meditations and another way you're ministering to others, what, what are some specific ways we can pray for you? Well, pray that I have sense and no one is saying no (laughs) to some things. Okay. Okay. (laughs) We've been praying for that one for some time time, because I, I, I do. I love everything I do, and I do travel a lot. Uh, just pray that, you know, I have good night's sleep because what I'll do, most of these are recorded between 5.30 and, say, 8.30 in the morning. Mm. <clears throat> That's when you're awake. That's when your mind is working well. And and so just that I can continue with this and continue to get them written and, uh, and never to look at the number of hours or work that it takes that that would in any way mm. discourage me from keeping this going. I mean, there's no reason that I don't keep this going. Um, I, I really do. I, I want to just be an encouragement to as many as I can. And there's dozens, literally hundreds of excellent, excellent things out there. Mm. But I do have in my little world of ministry through the wilds ministries and especially the teens, God has given me that, group of friends that if we can connect with and somebody they already know, I just want to encourage them, like you said, to love God and to hate yeah. sin a little bit more. All right. That's great. So, so Ryan, let's back up to about 10,000 feet and you know, your life is teens. We know that I've seen your ministry up close, fairly up close, not as up close as some, but we all appreciate what you do. You're constantly having teens and parents email you, call you, contact you, So again, back at at 10,000 feet, you mentioned loneliness. What are two or three of the biggest obstacles, traps that teens are now facing and what will be the biblical solution to those? Because um, we all right. so we're recording this in December of 2021. So in our culture, as we see it right now, what do you see as the two or three uh, biggest obstacles? Well, there's two major addictions that a lot of our kids face. One is an addiction to acceptance. Uh, As much as they have phones and can connect with people all over the world, like I mentioned, they are lonely and parents are very, very busy. And I don't want to be mean, but a lot of kids, when I talk to them, it seems like it's one or the other. Either they have moms and dads that are there for them, with them, and love them. Or I hear this, mom's always mad and dad's never home. And so a lot of kids are kind of growing up with, without, you know, that strong family tie. And if they have a misguided relationship with their earthly father, and again, I I don't mean to be harsh at all. 
it normally results in a misunderstanding of who their heavenly father really is. Yeah. Uh, they think he's angry with them or he's distant or he doesn't care. And so that that's one aspect, but obviously in this crazy world that we have, the second one is the addiction to porn, basically immorality. It is so readily available on, on all their media tools. And when people say, Ray, what can we do? So here's what I here's what I encourage. Number one, the first thing, if I get, which I have three on my computer right now, three phone calls, and I think two of the guys are married maybe, and one is not calling, just help me, help me, Rand. The very first thing I do, if anyone's addicted basically to anything, but especially to any form of media immorality, um, the first thing I said, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take about six weeks, an hour a day, and we're gonna go to the book of Psalms, and we're gonna get to know God. And we're going to fill in blank. God is my blank or my God is blank. God is my shepherd. God is my high tower. My God is strong. My God is patient. And then write the verse in a little paragraph. Now, the reason for this is because if we're just motivated to do right and to get out of sin because we feel bad, feel like a loser, feel like a bum, it's still really selfish. But if we're motivated because how wonderful and loving and forgiving God is to us and our desire is not just not to be embarrassed or feel like a loser, but we don't want to displease God. So the more they know their God, the more they'll be motivated to do right. But the second thing, you already mentioned the passage, wherewithal shall young man cleanse? Clean his way mm-hmm. by taking heed there to accord thy word with my whole heart of my sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Ephesians, you are clean through the word which I have given you. And so we know that the only, only, only thing that can clean up and change a mind, that can renew a mind that's been given into the deceitful lust, Ephesians yeah. 4, is constant exposure in the word of God, the memorization and the meditation of the word of God. And just read the Bible. I'm speaking tomorrow at a Christian school on read, read, examine, apply, do, read, read, read. How do you memorize? Read. How do you meditate? Read. How do you master it in your life? Or Psalm, what is it, 119 verse 16, I will not forget thy word. Mm -hmm. Simply read. And I encourage kids to take like the book of Philippians and read it once a day, all the way through for a whole month. And by the time they get to the end of the month, they know that book well. And sometimes they even have portions memorized. And so any addictive behavior, anything we struggle with, loneliness, any of that, it's not that just God has the answer. He is the answer. And and the more we dig into his word, the more we'll understand that. So, Ryan, let's go back to acceptance and loneliness. Would you recommend the same thing? Yes. First thing, I mean, it's amazing how often getting people to understand uh, how wonderful their God is. Now, the second thing I would do that is the same thing I do at camp when we have somebody that's like really, really homesick yeah. and they'll come to me and they want to go home and I'll say, oh, homesick. Oh, it just hurts so much. Yes. And you say it and you just so want to be where it's comfortable. Anybody else in your cabin? Yeah, Mike is too. Man, I bet he feels terrible today. Why don't you go find Mike? Here, I'll pay for it. You take him to Cool Beans, uh, you get him a drink, then you go play some carpet ball with them. Okay. You know what they just did? They got their eyes off of self, put it back on God and others. And that, that I I really don't know of anything else. Most of our problems in life Mm -hmm. come from a very, very selfish focus. It's all about me and my comfort, my time and my things and taking our eyes off of God and others. Okay. Acceptance um, and porn and some other stuff. Is, Is there a third one that comes up over and over? Um. Well, a lot of people accuse teens of being apathetic. Um, I always say I've never met an apathetic teen. They're very passionate about not caring Um, (laughs) sometimes. But the apathy just comes from a lack of a a lack of knowing God Mm. and a lack of understanding that God can use them in a great way. And so goalless, I'll call it goalless. Let me just tell you this real quick story. One of our campers actually came with her sister to me. She's 16, sister's 14. Her sister is the spokesperson. This girl's very quiet. So they come to me at camp and the little girl said, go ahead, ask Rand. I can't ask him, ask him. I said, she said, I said, come on, whatever you want. Then she said to me, is it stupid for me to go to college and, and major in Christian camping? And I said, yeah. 
And she just started to cry. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. Yeah, listen to me. If you want to be in Christian camping, and she does. She so loves yeah. camp. She wants this to be her life. Right. I said, I can teach you everything you need to know about camp, like in one summer. But what you need to do is go and major like administrative assistant or secretarial or even culinary arts. Cause every camp I know is looking for a good cook. Man, when I said wow. that she freaked out, oh, you mean, honestly, I love to cook. So yeah. I said, well, come with me. I introduced her to Cassie, our cook. Right. She spent some time with her. The girl goes home, talks to her mom and dad. Can we find a college or a place that I can learn how to cook, but I want to get a good Christian education too. She has a goal in her life. Wow. She wants yeah. to be a Cassie. Mm. And, and now at 16, she has a goal, and she's going to do everything she can to be able to reach that goal. Mm. So even Paul, constantly forgetting those things which are behind, he's yeah. looking ahead. How can I please God with the gifts and the desires and the talents God has given me? Amen. Amen. You have a lot of gifts and talents, and, and Rand, I don't want to take any more of your time. I just want to thank you for taking the time to share this with us and, and really explaining about daily meditations and really how this is uh, being produced to help teens and their families. So, uh, in closing, tell us how your wife is doing. You, she's always praying for you, ministering in the background or behind the piano. And have you already had snow in New England? You know what? We've snowed, I've shoveled, but then we had some rain and uh -oh. it's, it's weird because it's green out there. Wow. So we've got about a week to get a white Christmas. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. All right. Brother, thanks for your time again. Again, it's uh, ranhummel.com. Uh, daily meditations, go subscribe to it, listen to it, uh, forward it to your youth pastor, family devotions, uh, listen to it in youth groups. So Rand, I want to thank you so much for using all your gifts and talents to the glory of God. Thanks, thank you brother. very much. Thank you. You're listening to ReChurch, a podcast of Gospel Fellowship Association Missions. If you would like more information about our ministry or how we may assist you and your church, visit us at gfamissions.org slash consulting.